Methodist hymn number 116. 116. Thank you.
drop down dew from above you heavens and let the clouds rain down the just one. Let the earth be opened and bring forth a savior. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today is the fourth Sunday of Advent, and we are praying the Mass arranged for the day. Our period of preparation and waiting is almost over. As God is about to incarnate, take on our human form, and enter his creation. For us, this seems impossible. But as our theme says for today, nothing is impossible with God. And therefore, like Mary, let us pray that we'll make ourselves available and pray for the spirit of obedience. As she said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it done unto me according to your word. Let us also pray that God's plan for our lives will be made manifest in accordance with his salvation plan and by our living lives as true followers of Christ. At this mass also we we'll pray for the peace of the world and our dear nation, Ghana, that God's wisdom may be the source of guidance we receive from our leaders. We we'll pray for the church throughout the world that through self-surrender and obedience, she may demonstrate God's sovereign power to the world by bringing the good news of Christ to a broken world. At this Mass, we would also pray for a successful special general meeting as we approve our financial estimates for the year 2021. We will pray for all those who have asked for our prayers at this Mass, remembering our newly married Thomas Ross and Mary Ann Bryan, Mr. and Mrs. Benjamin and Rachel Tokonu, Michael Ofusukwate, who has been called to the bar, and for the following who have been called to the arrest. Diana Mensa Apia, who was laid to rest on Thursday. Professor Anna Reynolds Bands also laid to rest on Thursday. William Augustus Baja, laid to rest on Friday. And we shall commemorate the following anniversaries. Leslie Osei, J.E.K. Moses, and James Abeku Pinkra. We'll also join our hearts with all those who are offering various forms of thanksgiving for a surgical operation, for being healed from the COVID-19, for God's goodness and mercies in their lives. Finally, my dear brothers and sisters, in the quiet of your own hearts, bring your own petitions and requests before the throne of grace. For where two or three are gathered in his name, he is present. And as a loving father, he will answer our prayers. The Lord be with you. 
Almighty God, and to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us therefore confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments, and to live in love with all people. We shall kneel and confess in the words of the general confession. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our fellow men. May Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sin, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep us all in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. God, our Redeemer, who prepared the Blessed Virgin Mary to be the mother of your Son, grants that as she looked for his coming as our Savior, so we may be ready to greet him when he comes again as our Judge, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for our brothers and sisters who are giving various thanksgivings. O oh God, your mercy is without measure. The treasures of your goodness without limit. We thank you for the favors you have bestowed on our newlyweds, Mr. and Mrs. Benjamin, and Rachel Tokonu, Mr. and Mrs. Thomas and Mary and Brian, and Michael of Usukwate, who was called to the bar, and James, your son. As we do so, we appeal to your compassion to stay close to them and prepare them for the rewards of the life to come. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for those who have been called to the arrest. All-powerful God, 
whose mercy is never withheld from those who call upon you in hope. Look kindly on your servants, Dinah Mensa Appear, Professor Anna Reynolds Barnes, William Augustus Baja, Leslie Osei, J.E.K. Moses, and James Abeku Pinkra, who departed this life confessing your name and number them among your saints forevermore. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please sit for the scripture readings. The Old Testament lesson is taken from 2 Samuel chapter 7, reading from verse 1 to 11. 2 Samuel 7, 1 to 11. Let us hear the word of God. After the king was settled in his palace, and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, he said to Nathan the prophet, Here I am, living in a house of cedar, while the ark of God remains in a tent. Nathan replied to the king, Whatever you have in mind, go ahead and do it, for the Lord is with you. But that night, the word of the Lord came to Nathan, saying, Go and tell my servant David, This is what the Lord says. Are you the one to build me a house to dwell in? I have not dwelt in a house from the day I brought the Israelites up out of Egypt to this day. I have been moving from place to place with a tent as my dwelling. Wherever I have moved with all the Israelites, did I ever say to any of their rulers whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now then, tell my servant David, this is what the Lord Almighty says. I took you from the pasture, from tending the flock, and appointed you ruler over my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you have gone, and I have cut off all your enemies from before you. Now I will make your name great, like the names of the greatest men on earth. And I will provide a place for my people Israel, and will plant them, so that they can have a home of their own, and no longer be disturbed. Wicked people shall not oppress them any more, as they did at the beginning and have done ever since the time I appointed leaders over my people Israel. I will also give you rest from all your enemies. The Lord declares to you that the Lord himself will establish a house for you. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is taken from Romans chapter 16, reading from verse 25 to 27. Romans 16, 25 to 27. Let us hear the word of God. Now to him who is able to establish you in accordance with my gospel, the message I proclaim about Jesus Christ, in keeping with the revelation of the mystery hidden for long ages past, but now revealed and made known through the prophetic writings by the command of the eternal God, so that all the Gentiles might come to the obedience that comes from faith. To the only wise God be glory forever through Jesus Christ. This is the end of the lesson. Our canticle of praise is Mary's hymn of praise for our Lord popularly called the Magnificat. My soul doth magnify the Lord.
The Lord be with you. Hear the gospel of Christ according to Luke, chapter 1, reading at the 26th verse. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 1, verse 26 to 38. Luke 1, 26 to 38. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son. And you are to call his name Jesus. He will be great. I will be called the son of the Most High. The Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be? Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin. The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she, who was said to be unable to conceive, is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. Beloved, the gospel of Christ. The sermon hymn is Methodist Hymn 548. 548.
Let us pray. Great Father, we thank you for the opportunity today to share in ministering to your glory. And we commit ourselves into your care. We pray that your Holy Spirit will overshadow us and work in us that which is pleasing in your sight. We ask this in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Today, as we have been told, is the fourth Sunday of Advent. And as we reminded ourselves right from the beginning of the Advent season, the period is a period that we do remind ourselves about the coming of God's Son. We look at this coming from two fronts, the forward look and the backward look. The forward look has to do with the second coming of Christ. We remind ourselves that just as Christ came, he will come again. And therefore, we challenge ourselves about the need to prepare to receive him when he comes the second time, not as a baby in the manger, but as the judge, to judge all mankind. The backward look look reminds us about how he came into the world in the first instance. For the last three Sundays, we have been focusing on his second coming, the parousia. And today, being the last Sunday of Advent, our attention is being drawn to how he came in the first place. That is the backward look. We say that Advent is also a time of preparation for the celebration of the anniversary of Christ's birth, what we refer to as Christmas. That is how come in our gospel lesson for today, we are told about how the angel visited Mary in Bethlehem and, that is, and the conversation that came in between them. We are told the angel visited Mary in Bethlehem and greeted him a special kind of greetings, which made Mary disturbed. The, the, the greetings was too loaded. She thought it was not, she was not fit for that kind of greetings. And the angel, observing that the, the lady was disturbed, had to calm down her fears. Do not be afraid. Fear not. Something wonderful is going to happen. That is why I greet you with that greetings. And all has to do with God has chosen you to become the bearer of his son who is about to come to the world. You will conceive. And you will, uh, one is, there is no wonder here when somebody who is a virgin is told you will conceive and, and give birth to a son, immediately Mary got the most startled. So it was not difficult. It is reasonable for Mary to question the angel. Let us remember that even though we are Christians and are religious people, we believe that God has the capacity to do anything that he wants to do if it falls within his will. But for us as human beings, we don't have that capacity. And so it is not strange for Mary to express how can this be. We know that is how God has created us as human beings that, yes, we have the capacity to reproduce. But there is a formula for it. The interaction of the male ovum the female ovum with the male sperm pays the way for conception. And that is standard. And so for, somebody, for an angel to tell Mary about a conception that was about to take place in her, and he, she knowing in herself that he was a virgin, he hasn't had any encounter, sexual encounter with any male. It was just reasonable to ask that question, how can this be? Perhaps most of us would have have asked the same question, or perhaps we may have laughed it off. What is this man saying? Does this angel not know that I'm a virgin to talk about me conceiving somebody to be the son of God? 
But here the angel comes in again quickly, swiftly, to draw Mary's attention to the fact that what is going to happen is not something that human beings are going to do. This is coming from the perspective of God. And so he, he, he tells Mary, for God, nothing is impossible with him. And that is the theme that has been given us for today, for our discussion. Nothing is impossible with God. I want us to make this clear that Mary did not express doubt about God's ability. He was stating what actually was the fact. Because as human beings, there can be no conception without the interaction of the female and male sexual reproductive ele elements. It is no wonder that after the angel has explained that nothing is impossible with God, Mary quickly gave in and gave her consent. Nothing is indeed impossible with God. We as human beings usually judge God from our standards. Because as human beings, we don't have the capacity to do everything. God has given us the capability to do certain things. The laws of nature, everything are fixed for us. And so within that sphere, God has given us the ability, the capacity to do certain things. But beyond that, there are so many other things that we cannot do. The message of the angel to Mary wants to draw our attention to the fact that with God, there is no impossibility. And I want to make a couple of references to show that God, with God there is no impossibility. We all read the scriptures from time to time, or should I say always, and Genesis chapter 1 tells us about the creation story. I want to say that in the creation story, God did what was humanly impossible. The very act of creation couldn't have been thought of by any human being. For us, when we talk about creation or manufacturing, we are thinking of selecting an, a number of elements that God has already created. And somehow, through scientific investigation and application, through that, we produce something which is new. That, for us, will be our creation. We choose what has already been created, and out of that, work something else out of that. In that case, when God had not created the world, there was nothing to be used as a sample of anything to create any new thing. The scriptures will tell us that God created out of nothing, ex nihilo. There was nothing to be selected to use to, 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 to create the world. God just created using his own word, let this be, and it's so it, be, it became. God, nothing is impossible with him. I also want to make another reference from the Gospel according to St. Mark chapter 1, verses 40 through 42. There is a short story there about a leper, somebody who had leprosy, and he came to Jesus. According to the scriptures, he came to Jesus, and when he came, he knelt down. And then he implored Jesus. He was requesting something from Jesus, but he put a clause before it. He says, if you will, you can make me clean. If you will, you can make me clean. And Jesus Christ, in his response, said, the Bible says he was moved with pity. When the, lep the man with leprosy came to him and pleaded this way, Jesus was moved with pity for this man. And so he stretched forth his hand and touched him and said to him, I will be clean. This is to show that, yes, in those days, leprosy was held to be incurable. Nobody could cure leprosy. So, humanly speaking, it was not possible to heal the man. 
But this man was inspired to plead with Jesus Christ. I know that if you will, if you desire it, you have the ability, you can do it. And so he implored him, if you will, you can heal me. There, are, there may have been many doctors around, but he knew that there was no cure for his disease. But he believed Jesus Christ to be an extraordinary person. Perhaps out of what he has heard about him or what he himself has seen. And so he pleaded, if you will, you can make me clean. And we are told that Jesus was moved with sympathy for this man, stretched forth his hand and pronounced, you are clean. Be clean. And the Bible says instantly, Mark will say immediately, the man became clean. In Jeremiah we read, Jeremiah 32, God asking through the prophet, is anything too hard for God? All these things are in line with the words that the, 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 the angel spoke. Nothing is impossible with God. That is to say, God can do anything. But whenever I generalize it, God can do anything, I'm always tempted always to focus on the fact that human beings can think about anything, possibly even extend it to the, to the, to the extreme, to say that God can do something which is sinful, something which is not in his will. And that is where we need to caution ourselves. Sometimes we overstretch certain statements or declarations in the Bible. With God, there is nothing that is possible. But that does not mean that God is prepared to do something which is sinful. Nothing is impossible with God when it falls within his will. That is what the, the, the leper was appealing to. If you choose not to, you cannot heal me. When it comes to ability, you have it. But if it does not fall within your will, you will not. And that is who God is. Otherwise, he will not be a just or perhaps a moral God, if I should say. God can do anything. And let me add that perhaps except sin. Nothing is impossible with him. When it comes to anything falling within the will of God, God what God wills, nothing stops him. He can do anything that we can think of or imagine. The next point that I want to draw attention to is that the Holy Spirit is the effective agent of the Godhead. What do I mean? I'm saying that when God decides to take any action, it is the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity, that is responsible. So, we hear in Luke chapter, Luke chapter 1 verse 35, the angel telling Mary, immediately he had uh, assured Mary about the possibility of what was about to happen. He says, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. That is not something that you yourself are going to do. It is the Holy Spirit that will come upon you, and the power of the Most High God will overshadow you. That is how come the child that you will bear will be called the Son of God. You will not be the son of any human agency. John chapter 1 also affirms it. Those who believe in Jesus Christ become God's children, not through the agency of any human intervention, but that through God himself, the Holy Spirit himself. So the Holy Spirit that God gives to his people is given so that God will work through him in the world. The Immaculate Conception of, Jesus, of Mary, of his son Jesus Christ, was an act of God through the agency of the Holy Spirit, the third person of the divine Godhead. And perhaps this should remind us as Christians that we should not rely on our own strength or understanding or knowledge in anything, especially when we want to talk about things that are difficult to be done. For normal things, yes, we can apply our knowledge, our science and technology, so to say. They achieve quite a lot. They are knowledge that is helpful. 
But in spite of all that, there are other things that because we are human beings, we have not the ability. We don't have the capacity to be able to do them. And that, exactly that is what Mary was saying. This is not possible. It is possible that some in our time, perhaps people will have questioned, people will question, oh, but there is in vitro fertilization where the sperm and the ovum of a man and a woman are taken outside and then mated to produce a son. Yes, that was not known in those days. But God, in his own ability and capacity, was able to do that. The conception of Mary, of, of his son Jesus Christ, did not come through any human agency. So it is the Spirit himself that God used to produce what humanly is impossible. And when God brings in his Spirit, that which we conceive as impossibility becomes possible. When the angel came to Mary, and when Mary was thinking about our human abilities, the angel, apart from telling him that the Holy Spirit will overshadow him, also drew his attention to the fact that you know your cousin Elizabeth, that lady who everybody knows is a barren woman, that lady who is an old woman, is gone past the age of giving birth. Let me tell you, she is six months pregnant, six months old pregnant. Again, that tells you that with God, that is nothing, that is not possible. God can do. People who have been named as barren, and that is when you talk about barren in this sense, we are talking about barrenness because we are human beings. According to human abilities, the person is barren, yes. The doctor might even tell you that it is not possible for you to, 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 to give birth to a child. Scientifically proven. But that does not stop God from acting. Because after all, when he created the world, there was nothing to be used. It was just his word. So whenever God speaks, it's an event. It takes place. And that is why in, in Luke chapter 1 verse 37, where we are told that not, nothing is impossible with God. If there are some of the old, old ancient manuscripts that have a different wording, if, if you may have observed. In some, version, in some versions of the New International Version, we are told that the word of God cannot fail. Instead of with God, there is no impossibility. But they come to the same thing. What is the word of God? What God has spoken? What is the will of God? Nothing can stop it from happening. Nothing is impossible with God. And so, Mary at that stage needed anything to be convinced of again. Yes, if the angel is talking about what God can do, then I cannot argue. So she willingly, gladly gave in. I am the maidservant of the Lord. Let it be unto me according to what God wills, according to the word of God, according to what you have told me, which is God's will. Beloved, nothing is impossible with God. And from the moment gave God, Mary gave in her, her assent, the greatest event in history was initiated. Right at that time, God was implanted in the womb of Mary. And for next, the for next nine months, Mary bore God in her womb to be delivered. This event, which is the center of all history, in our lessons today, try to link it with the past as well as with the present. You hear the angel talking to, to, talking to Mary about the fact that, he would, that uh, the, the throne of his, of his um, father, David, the son which he was going to bear, the throne of his father, David, will be given to him. And you see... Go back to the first scripture reading that was read, 2 Samuel, chapter 7, where we are told that David, in those days, after he had gone through a lot of wars and had been successful by the grace of God, had built himself a beautiful temple, a, a palace, and was enjoying. And then he thought again and said, oh, what I'm doing is not right. Why should I be living in this kind of place where the tent of the God who gave me the power to, do, to, to overcome my enemies, 
the te- his tent is in somebody's backyard. So he decided that he would put up a temple for God, a house for God. And we are told he called the prophet and told him, the prophet said, right, perfect. Go and do it. Do everything that is in your heart. It's a good thing. But we are told in the scriptures that when the, when the uh, prophet went home, God confronted him and said, did I speak to you today? It wasn't I who told you that one. Go back to David and tell him that, no, I'm not going to take a temple at his hands. Even though God did not accept David's desire to put a temple down for him, because of his support for him and his love for him, he promised David, instead of you building me a house, I rather will build a house, a dynasty for you. And we need to understand that one because the first king of the Israelites was, didn't come from the line of Judah. Saul, as we all know, was the first king. But because Saul was disobedient to God in so many ways, he was dethroned. And when David was selected, because of his humility, God approved of him and helped him to overcome all his enemies. So God decided, I will build a dynasty for you. The house of David will forever remain the dynasty which will rule my people. And we hear the angel linking this with the message that he brought to Mary. That son that you are going to bear will sit on the throne of his father David. That is to say that it is not something that has just come impromptu. It is God's plan. God has willed it and God is working his purposes out. So he makes the, she makes the connection. And then when we read the second scripture passage that was read this morning, Romans chapter 16, verses 25 to 27, that whole thing, this event, which is the birth of Jesus Christ, is linked to the salvation of all Gentiles. One deep question that the Israelites would have found difficult to answer was, can a, Jew, a Gentile be saved? And in their case, they would have answered straightforwardly, it is not possible. A Gentile cannot be saved. Why? Because he's not of the tribe of the stock of Abraham. God has ordained salvation for his people. The rest do not matter. But let us go slowly through what Paul says in Romans chapter 16. He says, now who, the one who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel. And interestingly, Paul talks about a gospel which he calls his, his gospel. Even though we all know of one gospel, one gospel message about the birth of Jesus Christ, who is the savior of mankind. Paul usually talks about my gospel, the gospel that I preach. My gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ. What is it? Paul says, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages. And this apostle is one of the apostles who, are, who is always involved in revealing mysteries. Mysteries. He says, it is a mystery that was kept secret for long ages. And what is this mystery? The mystery is that God intended to save the Jews as well as the Gentile world. But it had been kept secret according to God's plan. But has now been disclosed through the prophet's writings and has been made known to all nations according to the command of God. God has now commanded that that, thing, that mystery which he had kept secret in ages past, now he has ordered, he has commanded that even though they are in the writings of the prophets, nobody could explain it. And so they looked at the, uh, 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 the Bible uh, uh, as uh, salvation as something which belonged only to the Jews. God had it in his writings, in the prophet's writings, that that is not the case. But nobody was preaching about it. They still held, even though they believed the word of God, they still held to the fact that it, is, it was only they, they who could be saved. The Gentiles do not matter. Paul is saying, no, it is hidden there in the, prophet, the prophet's writings. But the fact is that it has not been received. But now, by the command of God, by the command of the eternal God, that mystery has been disclosed. And what is that mystery? The mystery of Jesus Christ, who was born as a human being, who came so that all who believe, not only Jews, 
will be saved. So he links both the virgin birth or the immaculate conception of, Jesus, of, of Mary to the old prophetic writings, God's will in the Old Testament, together with the salvation of the whole world at the end of time, which included Gentiles. And Paul says that God should be glorified for this. Brothers and sisters, there are a few notes that I make out of all these stories. And permit me to share with you the first point I want to make as a, is that whatever God wills is possible with him. If it is in the will of God, nothing is impossible. It could be impossible with God if it is not in his will. If God thought something was wrong and it was sinful, he will not do it. And that is not to say that he is incapable. He has power. He has ability. He can. But because it, will, it is not in his will, he will not do it. The reverse is whatever God wills, whatever is in God's will, it is possible to him. The second point that I want us to, net, to note is that God works out his purposes through the agency of the Holy Spirit. God works out all his purposes through the agency of the Holy Spirit. In the case of Mary, he was, she was told the Holy Spirit will come upon you and you will be overshadowed. That is how come the thing that you think it is impossible, God will make it possible. Perhaps there are a lot of things in our own lives which we think impossible. Sometimes we have come to our wit's end in finding solutions to a lot of things that are, that are disturbing us. Perhaps we have come to the conclusion that this is not possible. You, you, you may not be lying. Humanly speaking, it may not be possible. But from what we learn from what God does through his agency of the Holy Spirit, God can even do the things that we think is impossible in our lives through the agency of his Holy Spirit. That is why we don't have to be only carnal Christians. Because when we are only carnal Christians, things are possible only when it is humanly possible. But for those who have the Spirit of God, those for whom the Spirit of God works in, those who live according to the will of God, even the things that are impossible, we just sang it, the thing impossible to us will be possible because God comes in and changes things. The third point is that we must believe whatever is the will of God. If some, the scriptures tell us something is God's will, it is our duty as believers to believe it. Believe it because God is beyond us and he has the ability, the capacity to do everything that he wants to do. And so if God wants it, don't think it is difficult. There are a lot of instances in our own world today where things have been ruled out as impossible but through God's miraculous interventions have happened. Already I've cited some of them to you about the leper who, who was believed is not curable but he was healed about creation when God just spoke and it happened. And then about Lisbeth, who was known as a, as a barren woman, and an old woman in, in, his, in her old age also gave birth. In the same way, just as Mary was did. It, ha it happened to Mary. So, we have to believe whatever is the will of God. And that perhaps calls on us to know what the will of God is in this world. In fact, if you don't know what God's will is, then how, how then can you can, can, can you appeal to him? How can we claim it? How can we pray for it for them? And like Mary, we must trust him to accomplish it. Whatever is the will of God, let us trust God that he is able. Let us trust God, damning all the human contradictions, condemnations. We all know that Mary's problem was a problem we all have gone through. I know myself not to have a husband. I have not had any sexual interaction with any man. And the next morning, everybody knows that I'm a, preg a pregnant woman. And you know the implications for this in the Old Testament. Death penalty through stoning. But once Mary got convinced that this is an action of God, so be it. And that's what I'm, we are calling ourselves upon to do. If we are convinced about an action as something that God wills, damn the consequences. Because with God, there is no impossibility. 
The fourth point I've, said about, I've talked about is that concerning our salvation, it is God's word that salvation is open to all. And by all, I mean all. Both Jews and Gentiles. Not Jews alone. Not Ab Abraham's children alone. But all mankind. It is God's gift, God's will, that salvation is open to all. But how do we achieve salvation? He says, it is through the obedience of faith. Let me draw your attention to this teaching that Paul gives. It's part, part of my gospel that Paul preaches about. Paul talks about uh, obedience of works and then obedience of faith. He refers to the, the obedience of the Jewish people as obedience through works. That is, they were only responding to the, the Ten Commandments. God said we should do this and I'm doing it. Or God says we shouldn't do this and I've not done it. Therefore, I'm a saved person. That is obedience through works. And we all know that salvation is not through the works. Not the efforts of our hands can procure for us our salvation. We all know, just as Ephesians, uh, Ephesians 2, 8, 9 tells us, that salvation is an act of grace through faith that we are saved. And so God made through, uh, birth through Jesus a center where, where, whether you were a Jew or you were a Gentile, you have to pass through the same channel for salvation. The channel whereby others would think that they would, they would be obedient to God's works or to the laws of God to procure salvation for them was out. Because we know in scripture that not the labors of my hands can fulfill God's demands. We do the best that we can. But none of us can say that I'm without sin because we fall short one way or the other. Not only in the things that we do, but sometimes in the things that we fail to do, we commit sin. What God has provided for all of us is that he brought his son Jesus Christ, that those who believe in him. So believing in Jesus, faith in Jesus Christ now becomes the channel by which all of us, whether Jew or Gentile, have to come to God through. So salvation is made available to all. The Jew, Jewish people cannot have the monopoly. Just as in our days, let us not think that those of us who come to church have a monopoly of God's salvation. It is faith, obedience through faith in Christ. That is the only condition. That is the only channel by which God wants us to be saved. And so, my humble appeal to all of us today as we come and prepare ourselves for Christmas, happening in the course of the week, that may we all, like Mary, yield Behold, I am the handmaiden of the Lord. I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to God's word. If we are able to, in humility, surrender ourselves into God's hands, trust God that there is no impossibility. No impossibility, not in the sense that we are able to do everything, but God is able and when he ha we have pleaded to him, through the agency of his Holy Spirit, all things will be possible to us. May the Lord himself grant us this kind of faith, this kind of attitude to life. Even as we prepare to celebrate Christmas, yes, we will come to church. Let, let us not use church attendance as a kind of obedience to works, through works. But what is your faith like as you celebrate Christmas? As you come to church on Christmas Day, what is your faith in Jesus like? Do you believe in him? Have you made him the Lord of your lives? Without this, as long as we are human beings, we will live in this world, there will be a lot of impossibilities for us. That's humanly speaking. And when we allow God to come in through faith in Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit overshadows us, and the thing which is impossible becomes possible. Think about the dearest condition that you find yourself, the most difficult challenge that you have in your life. And I want to give you the assurance that if you will allow God for him, nothing is impossible. Let us pray. Thank you, gracious God, that for you the thing impossible is possible. And you expect all of us to be like Mary. Even though initially, because of our human condition, we will doubt that certain things are achievable in this world. You assure us that with you there is no impossibility. 
And when we have given in our consent, through the agency of your Holy Spirit, you are able to accomplish for us those things which we consider impossible. Grant us this faith, Lord, not only for today, not only for Christmas, but throughout our whole lives, in our marital lives, at our workplaces. Grant us this kind of faith so that the difficult things that we are confronted with, which sometimes causes us to lose hope in your love for us, will be overcome. We cannot do anything without your Holy Spirit, you have told us. Overshadow us with your Holy Spirit. That nothing will be impossible for us. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Shall we please stand? Having listened to the sermon, let us together affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried, he descended into hell. On the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, to heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please sit for the intercessory prayers. With our heads bow before God, we pray. Gracious God, to whom nothing is impossible, to whom no secrets are hid, you are the only true God, the only potentate, who alone has immortality, and dwelling in the light which no man can approach upon. Whom no man has ever seen, nor can ever see. To whom be honor and power everlasting. O God, receive our sacrifice of praise. Amen. You alone is worthy to be praised. We worship you and we adore you. And so we pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our attitude to prayer as we await his coming as Christmas, I urge you to rededicate your life and to open your heart to receive Jesus. They used to say there was no place for him. Now let's open our heart to receive him. O oh God, our Father in heaven, make this experience of receiving Jesus real. Help us to feel that we are in communion and in oneness with you, our God. That in these sacred moments of silent prayer, God himself may commune with us and enter into our hearts. That we may feel the surge and the thrill of the power of the Holy Spirit. Through which God does everything.
Oh, come to my heart, Lord Jesus. There is room in my heart for you. People of God, pray along. Holy Spirit, please come and be the caretaker of my life. Help me to find your presence in every situation, every twist and turn of my life. Spirit of the living God, attract my heart unto holiness, that we become a living similarity of Jesus himself, and to live a life pleasing unto God. Lord, in your mercy, let us now pray for the upcoming meeting. Spirit of God, we commit the leadership of this event about to take place after this service into your care. We place the clergy, the chair of council, those to account for your resources, those who want to contribute and make inputs of this special meeting. Lord, let anything that goes on here be wholly agreeable to the most perfect will of you, our God. Lord, in your mercy, let us pray for Ghana. After these worrisome times after elections, let us, people of God, stand as an oracle of divine communication on behalf of Ghana to God. Let us pray for an ordered, and most appropriate structure of governance in Ghana today. Please talk to God. Talk to him. Pray. Intercede for Ghana. God owns Ghana. Ghana is not the property of anybody. Pray. Pray. Anoint and cheer our solid face with the abundance of thy, thy grace, O God. Keep far our foes, dispel gloom, and quell troublemaking. Give peace at home, our homeland Ghana. Our homeland Ghana. Your Ghana, where thou art God, no ill can come. Take control of events in Ghana today, Lord. Give political directions. You are our God, Lord, in your mercy. Lord, in your mercy. And now I urge you to prophesy upon yourself. Pray blessings upon yourself. The miracle is in the words that you speak. People of God, ask God to give you new levels in all circumstances of your being. Remember someone and pray blessings upon them. Remember a sister who is thanking God for answered prayer concerning the son's university fees and for his protection throughout the past months. She declares, Indeed, our God answers prayer and makes a way where there seems to be no way.
A hymn of praise is Methodist hymn 10. On the occasion of their 45th anniversary, a couple is thanking God for bringing them this far and his manifold blessings bestowed upon them and their family. Their text is Psalm 145, verses 1 and 2. The family of the late Mrs. Professor Anan Reynolds, Barnes, gives thanks to God for blessing them with her life and for the successful burial ceremony. Their hymn of praise is Methodist 4 to 8. James thanks the Lord for his goodness, mercy, faithfulness, and blessings over the years. He prays for good health, unwavering trust in the Lord, and for strength to serve him in the coming years. His text is Psalm 46. Remember also a member who has gone through a surgical operation and is asking for the mercies of God for subsequent ones. Remember this member in your prayers. God has the spare parts to our bodies. May the healing balm of Gilead descend upon this member. And may God heal us all from our infirmities. Lord, in your mercy, a member thanks the Lord for taking her through another year and healing her of COVID-19. She is thankful to God for how far he has brought her. Tete, Cecil, Michael, and Jay Ask for your prayer support to attend their destiny and biblical portions of blessing along the byways and pathways of their life. The hymn of praise for all the thanksgivings is better than hymn one. Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing, my great Redeemer's praise, the glories of my God and King, the triumph. Run off your prayer by thanking God for his many, many blessings and ask for more. Ask for more. Oh, Heavenly Father, the God of all flesh, to whom nothing is impossible. Mercifully look upon the people of God gathered before you. May you pour upon them the spirit of favor, the spirit of wise counsel, might, and power. Descend upon them in the name of Jesus. Amen. Shall we please stand? Nothing is impossible with God. Nothing is impossible with God. May the peace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ be with you all this morning and forevermore. Please resume your seat. Our offertory hymn, Ancient Modern 48, the choir will lead us. Ancient and Modern 48.
Father accepts the prayers we make on behalf of our newly married Thomas Ross and Mary Ann Bryan, Benjamin and Rachel Tokonu, Michael Ufosukote called to the bar, Tismak Carmen Terence Osei and James, together with our sisters who underwent the surgical operation and has been healed of COVID-19. Remember those who have been called to the arrest, Diana Mensah Apia, Professor Anna Reynolds Barnes, William Augustus Baja, Leslie Osei, J.E.K. Moses, and James Abeku Pinkra. And pray, my brothers and sisters, that this our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, our Father Almighty. May the Lord receive the sacrifice at our hands to the praise and glory of his name, both to our benefit and that of all his holy church. Amen. Amen. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is not only right, it is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise. Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord, for he is your living word. Through him you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your image. Through him you have freed us from the slavery of sin, giving him to be born as man, to die upon the cross, and rise again for us. Through him you have made us a people for your own possession, exalting him to your right hand on high, and sending upon us your holy and life-giving spirit. And now we give you thanks, because the day of our deliverance has dawned, and through him you will make all things new as he comes in power and triumph to judge the world. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. For in the same night he was betrayed, he took bread. And after giving you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Amen. Again, after supper, he took the cup. And after giving you thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of a new covenant, 
which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink this, do it in remembrance of me. Amen. Let us together proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Therefore, Heavenly Father, with this bread and this cup, we do this in remembrance of him. We celebrate and proclaim his perfect sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, his resurrection from the dead, and his ascension to heaven and we look for his coming in glory. Accept through him our great high priest, this is our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts, in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. with him, and in him, and through him, by the power of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven. We worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honor and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, so we pray. Our Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom, your will be done. Our hearts in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And all of us our sins. And as we forgive those who sin against us. Do not bring us to the time of trial. But deliver us from evil. The kingdom, the power, and the glory that we have given. Now and forever. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, give us your peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Happy are all those who are called to this banquet. Lord, I am not worthy to come under my roof, I speak your word only, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy to come under my roof, I speak your word only, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy to come under my roof, I speak your word only, and my soul shall be healed. The gift of God for the people of God. Amen.
hymn 716, 716. Continue with the hymn number 719. Asia is more than 719.
be with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, who chose the Blessed Virgin Mary to be the mother of the promised Savior, fill us, your servants, with your grace, that in all things we may embrace your holy will, and with her rejoice in your salvation. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us say together the prayer of thanksgiving. Almighty, Almighty God, we, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Please be seated. We'll take the notices for today. I publish the bands between Andrew Echo Bands and Ajinla Ekufuadu. This is the third and final announcement. If anyone knows any just cause or impediment as to why this couple should not be joined in holy matrimony, he or she must contact the ministers. Angela and Andrew, are you in church? Other announcements. The COVID-19 protocols are still in place. So encourage the social distancing, minimize contact, wear your face covering, let us promote good hygiene by washing our hands, Use the disposable paper towels. Would also like to request that any member who has been exposed or has been in the company of someone who has been exposed to the COVID-19 virus and has subsequently been to any of our services is requested to contact the administrative manager. All confidences will be kept. Thank you. Ghana Praise will come off this Wednesday at the usual time, 12 noon to 1 p.m. Special General Meeting, Accra Ridge Church, Budget 2021. The Special General Meeting has been rescheduled to be held immediately after the service today. It was rescheduled because we did not form a quorum the last time. The Richard School has started admitting children aged two to four into its preschool, that is Crash Nursery and KG1 at Manet. Interested parents are to pick up application forms at the school from Monday 21st to Wednesday 23rd December 2020 between 9.30 a.m. and 2 p.m. This form will cost you 150 Ghana cities. Members should note that the church office will be closed on Friday 25th to Wednesday 30th December and on 4th January 2021. The office will be closed from Friday 25th December to Wednesday 30th December and on 4th January 2021. The office will, however, be open for work on Thursday, 31st December 2020, and Tuesday, 5th of January 2021. Available at the bookstall is a 2021 devotional, Our Daily Bread. A copy sells at 20 Ghana cities. Funeral announcements. Burial service for the late Mrs. Wilhelmina Mayinate, a member of this church, will be held here at 9 a.m. on Tuesday, 22nd December, followed by a private burial. She was the wife of Mr. Richard Okonate, sister of Professor Samuel Ofosu Ama, and cousin of Mrs. Maud Blankson Mills. 
Mrs. Mary Chinri Hesse, Mrs. Joyce Mould Owusu, and Mr. Ray Sowa, all members of this church. The attire for the day will be black. Funeral arrangements for the late Mr. Kenneth Kwate Kojo Kwate, member of this church, is as follows. Date Tuesday, 29th December 2020. The venue will be the Lashibi Funeral Home. The time for filing past and the burial and thanksgiving service will be from 8.30 a.m. 8.30 a.m. Interment at Lashibi Garden of Peace. Kenneth was the eldest son of Mrs. Alberta Quarte, the husband of Mrs. Georgetta Quarte, father of Peter David, Katsina, and Sydney, brother of Reynold and Brian, and nephew of Dr. Kofi Hefron. He was a cousin of Mr. Ian Quarte and the son of Ambassador Terrence Strigner Scott. The death is reported of Kojo Yafe Ano, a member of this church. The funeral arrangements will be announced later. The death is also reported of Mr. Mensah Henry Dixon, a member of this church. Funeral arrangements will be announced later. He was a brother of Madame Leah Dixon, uncle of Equia Edu Boahin, Mary Dixon, and Kabna Edu Boahin, all members of this church. That concludes the announcements. We will now invite all those who have asked for the church's blessings to come forward. So birthday blessings, newly married, and those offering various thanksgivings, please come forward for the church's blessing. And our hymn for blessing will be Supplementary 32. Supplementary 32. desire in standing before the altar of grace. Open the windows of heaven and pour his blessings upon you. Those of you celebrating birthdays, may he bless you with long life and good health. Those of you celebrating thanksgivings, may he continue to watch over you, be your healer and your protector. For those of you celebrating your marriage, may the graces of marriage, this marathon, be made available to you. And may you walk into his love and grow in his love. And finally, unto God's gracious mercy and protection, I commit to you all. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. 
May he lift his sweet and noble countenance upon you and give you his peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you this morning and remain with you today and forevermore. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Please humble your heads and ask for God's blessings. May Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you and scatter the darkness from before your paths. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you this morning. Remain with you and your loved ones from today and forevermore. Amen. Amen. My brothers and sisters, the Mass is ended, but we are going to have our SGM. So stay behind for the SGM. Amen. Amen. It is said here, recession him, but we're not going anywhere. We're staying. Him 217. 217. The hymn before the meeting. 